everybody welcome to my channel and welcome to my very first video today I'm gonna show you how to make this IKEA hack that you see behind me um, my husband and I made it about a year ago and I've gotten so many questions on my Instagram on how to do it so I'm gonna tell you how we made it step one so the first thing you want to do is to measure the room and find out how many cabinets, bookcases, and other materials you need to build the bookcase. Depending on the ceiling height of your room or how tall you want it to be, you can go with either the tall or the low version of the Billy bookcases for your IKEA hack. We use the low version. Underneath them, we place these Knox Hold cabinets. Step two, build the base for the cabinets. We made sure to build it in the same height as our floor panels because then we could attach the exact same panel as we already had in the room, which really added to that built-in look. We used the angle brackets and screws to construct it. We also attached it to the wall so that it would be completely stable. You won't see the base and therefore it doesn't have to look perfect as long as you just make sure to build it like this so that it can support every cabinet properly. Step 3. Unbox and assemble your Knoxhole cabinets and place them on the base. We place them in the middle in order for it to be symmetrical on each side. While you're working on the built-in part of the bookshelves, you won't need the cabinet doors and the brackets and you can just put them away for now. Step 4. Attach the cabinets to each other so that they don't move. You really want it to be stable and stay symmetrically placed. We use clamps to make sure that the cabinets didn't move while screwing them together and we use these bar clamps to attach the cabinets to each other. Step five, now cut out eight small pieces of wood. The exact size is not that important. Just make sure they're not too small. Attach two of those to the wall on each side of the cabinets with ankle brackets and to the cabinets with the screw from inside the cabinet. Each piece of wood must be placed deep enough for the piece of MDF to fit and be perfectly aligned with the cabinets. Now cut two pieces of MDF that fits the rectangular niches between the cabinets and the walls. Step 6. So this is how you get that built-in look. It's time to attach the MDF pieces by screwing them into the small pieces of wood. Step 7. The next step is the tabletop. Measure the depth of the construction and decide how much you want the tabletop to go over the cabinet doors and measure the length on top of the cabinets and cut out a long piece of MDF. We needed to cut out three pieces of MDF because our bookcase measures four and a half meters. Remember, if you want a nice finish on, on the edge, cut the piece so that it's a little bit deeper and use an edge router to create the look that you want. Step eight, put the tabletop on the cabinets and attach with screws. Step nine, unbox your Billy bookcases. Assemble the sides, the back, the top, bottom, and middle shelf. Leave out the rest of the shelves for now. Now you need to cut off the bases on all of them. Step 10. Place one bookcase exactly on top of one cabinet. Step 11. Attach the bookcases to each other with clamps, just as you did with the cabinets earlier. We used these bar clamps between each set of bookcases to put them together. We used about two to three of them to attach two bookcases to each other. Step 12. If we were to do this hack again in the future, we would definitely remove the lowest placed shelf on each Billy bookcase and find another way to attach the bookcases to the cabinets. But on this version, we kept the bottom shelves and placed the screws up into those from below. Step 13. Once you've done that, measure the niches on each side of the bookcases and cut two more rectangular pieces of MDF for the sides. Cut about eight small pieces of wood and attach them with ankle brackets and screws to the wall and the cabinets, just as you did before on each side of the cabinets. Screw the MDF pieces into the small pieces of wood. Step 14. Now you can choose if you want a panel on top of your bookcase or if you want it to just stay the way it is. We attached a panel into the top of the Billy bookcase and put a Philips Hue light strip behind it. We really love it and it gives a wonderful and soft light in our living room. Step 15. Now place the shelves how you want them in each bookcase and fill the rest of the holes with wood filler, 
also the ones with screws in them. Wait for the filler to dry and then sand all the surfaces lightly. This will help the primer stick better to the surfaces. Then apply one more round of filler in each hole, wait for that to dry as well, and sand the areas one more time. If you only do one layer of filler, you won't get a completely smooth result because the filler sinks into the holes when it's dry. Step 16. Wipe all of the sanding dust from the construction with a damp cloth and wipe once more with a dry microfiber cloth. You don't want the dust to stick to the grout or the paint. Step 17. Now it's time for the grout. We grouted every little opening that we could find. Grouting can be difficult, so I would recommend watching a video specifically about this before doing it if you haven't done it before, as the end result will be much nicer if you have some basic knowledge about grouting. Step 18. Wait until the next day until the grout has dried. Now it's time to prime. We used a quality primer from this brand. Prime the whole thing and let it dry. Step 19. Finally, it's painting time. So for our version of the bookcase, we used medium glossy supreme finish paint from this brand. The color is called White Comfort, which is a warm white color. Our walls are actually painted with the same color, just in a matte version, whereas the bookcase is medium glossy to make it stand out more. We applied two layers in total, but some types of paint and colors may actually need three layers. I would recommend painting the shelves while in the bookcase and not outside because it's very hard putting the shelves back into the bookcase when there's three layers of primer and paint on it. Step 20. Find out where you want to place the moldings on the cabinets. We placed ours about four centimeters from the edges of the door. Step 21. Find some moldings that you like and cut the two different lengths that you need in a 45 degree angle with a mister saw. Use these for cutting the rest of them. By doing it this way, you make sure that they're all the same lengths. Step 22. Attaching the moldings can be done in two different ways. You can either use glue to attach the moldings onto the cabinet door, or you can use a nail gun. We used some glue specifically for wood. Make sure to wipe away any excess glue before it dries. This is a risky method because the moldings move very easily as long as the glue is still wet. If you use a nail gun, the moldings won't move at all and you don't have to deal with the glue, which can be a bit messy. Step 23. When it's dry, you can use wood filler to fill in the gaps between the moldings on the surface and for the corners and for the holes left by the nail gun. Wait for it to dry and sand it lightly until smooth. We only did this once, but you might want to do it twice if some of the holes are still visible. Remember to wipe away any dust before proceeding to the next step. Step 24. Now you can prime and then paint. You can either use a brush or you can spray paint it with a paint sprayer like we did. We used this one. Painting with the brush adds a handmade look to the surface while spray painting makes the surface look smooth. Both look really nice, but I think I like the spray painted version best. However, it's kind of messy and requires a bit of preparation compared to just dipping the brush in some paint, but once you're ready, it's really fast. We applied one layer of primer and two layers of paint. If it's your first time using a spray painter, take some time to get to know the device before painting the cabinet doors. Step 25. Now on to the last step. Attach the doors to the cabinets and take some time to adjust all of them so that they're level and evenly spaced out. You can either install IKEA Utrosta push openers inside the cabinets or you can add knobs to the outside of the cabinet doors. We wanted to avoid the knobs and went with the first option. Now you're all done and can enjoy your new beautiful piece of built-in furniture in your home. absolutely love everything about this bookcase and it has so much storage and it really is the centerpiece of our living room. We recently sold our home and this bookcase is definitely something that we're going to want to build again in our new home, which should be finished around February next year. When construction begins, I'll be documenting it and sharing it with you and we'll also be doing some minor IKEA hacks and a house tour of our temporary home. And until then, you can follow me on my Instagram. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell. And I'll have some more content for you very soon. Bye.